With the Oil Express instrument, there is the possibility that occlusion can occur on your deck with some of the lab wear. In that case, the Z rods that guide the Versa tips up and down, or the guide rods that are also next to the Z racks, can be bent or damaged. In the event of this occurrence, we would like to show you how to identify and replace these properly. The Z racks or Z rods can be identified by the distance between the pin and the end of the rod. This would be the lower end of the rod as it's inserted or uh, assembled in the instrument. So the rod with the shortest distance between the pin and the end of the rod is for tips one and three, and those are identified by counting from the rear of the instrument forward. So one is the closest to the back of the instrument. Two and four have the longer distance between the pin and the end of the rod. The guide rods, you'll note, have scallops in them that is engaged by the tip stripper rod, and this is used to push the tip stripper sleeve down as the tip or disposable tip is removed from the Versa tip during the running of the OE4. Okay, so the tools that you may need during the replacement of the Z-Racks and guide rods would be the 964th Allen key, a PZ1 Phillips screwdriver, a scribe may come in handy, a brush to make sure there are no debris, there's no debris or anything left in the Z-Rack, a flathead screwdriver if you have the small deck or mini Janus, and then a piece of electrical tape will come in handy to hold things in place as you replace the tip housing on the Z-Rack and guide rod. An optional item that you may want to replace while you're doing this would be the tip housings as well. Before we begin to replace the Z-Racks, we want to clear the deck. Now, if this is a short frame instrument, you'll need to use a flathead screwdriver to remove the deck plate. You do this carefully and then there are pins in the rear that hold the deck plate in position so that when you put it back on, you want to make sure the pins are aligned well and the screws go down, just don't over tighten them. For the XL version or the two deck version of the Oil Express or Oil Prep, we can move the assembly off the edge of the deck if the ULLS calibration plate is removed. So we begin by using our Phillips screwdriver to just loosen the Versa tip clamp on the tip housing and we're going to back out the tip stripper sleeve screw just enough to allow the tip stripper sleeve to drop. Then we're going to remove the screws from the tip housing and it's always a good idea to keep a paper towel underneath the Versa tip assembly as you do this. So if you drop one of these screws, it's less likely to bounce off into the floor. You can slide the plate tip housing cover off to the side and at this point you should be able to push the tip housing off of the Z-Rack by moving it backwards. Note this one has the short, this is tip number three that I'm working on here. It has the short end. Then you're going to rock it backwards and that will release it from the guide rod. Note the tip, Versa tip is held in place and the spring will come off the end of the guide rod. There's also a clip that we're going to reuse off of the guide rod. We're going to drop the guide rod down and set it aside. We want to make sure to always keep these separate from the new ones so that you don't get them mixed up and put a bent rod back in place. Now once we've done this, we're going to push the Z-Rack back up to the top and we're going to use a paper towel and go up to the top part 
of the Varus fan assembly. And we're going to surround this VersaTip with a paper towel. Now, in order for me to be able to move the VersaTip assembly around, of course, power has been removed from the Varus fan arm by turning the Janus power off. This will be more critical when we begin to insert the guide rods and z racks back up into the Varus fan assembly. So up top there is a clip, a guide clip, that we're going to remove the screw from. This paper towel will keep this screw from dropping down into the Varus fan assembly. There's an encoder in there in electronics assemblies that are very sensitive and we do not want to drop any pieces down in there that could result in costly downtime. And this assembly is stiff, this clip assembly is stiff, but it will just come right off if we pull straight up on it. Okay, we'll set it aside. Once we've done that, we we'll push back down on the Z rack and we're going to push up on the tip housings of the others. Note that I always push up on the solid part of the tip housing, not on the tip stripper sleeve. And we remove the bent Z-Rack. Now, we're going to remove the clip over the paper towel to make sure that we don't lose it. By pushing on each end of the clip, it comes off fairly easy. So we'll set these used pieces aside. And we will begin by making sure that the new assembly is good and, and clean. So we're gonna brush off the rack to make sure there are no debris or packing material that got left in the, in the gear rack that would transfer over to the internal spur gear inside the assembly. And I like to use a precision oiler that has just a small amount of a synthetic lube. I like to use the 0W20 full synthetic lube really as a cleaning agent. So I will put that on the back of the rod, careful not to get any on the on the gear itself. We're just gonna wipe that off and clean any residue or shipping materials that would have been left behind on the Z-Rack. Now, we're gonna move over and sometimes this can be done sitting down better, but we're gonna line that up with the gear facing forward into the hole, into the bushing in the Varus fan assembly. We're gonna push that up. Now it may try to come back down on you, so you just move it back over the deck a little bit just in case it does. We're gonna do the same cleaning procedure for the guide rod. Before we put this one up, I'm gonna have a short piece a short piece of electrical tape that we'll keep handy. A little over an inch long, not much. So when you insert the guide rod, we're gonna make sure that the scallop stay to the front. That's where the tip stripper rod will engage with it. Also, there's a pin that's inserted at the bottom that we want to make sure faces the rear. And I almost forgot, we need to insert our clip in the groove on the new rod. Now you may find the use of a pair of needle nose to be handy to do this, but if you're careful, you can insert it with your hand. Install it with your hand. Make sure it's fully seated in the groove. You can make sure by just feeling of it, making sure that it's fully seated. Okay. Now, we move the assembly back over. We insert the guide rod in the rear hole or rear bushing in the Varispan block. Okay, so once we have 
our guide rod in position and the clip back on the guide rod. I'm going to move this up so that the clip is just about even with the end of the Z-rack and we're going to place our tape across there just above everything here to kind of hold it in place for us while we get our tip housing in place. Now we're going to make sure while we do this that that pin stays, there's a longer part of the pin on the guide rod that needs to stick directly out behind and the scallops are facing forward. And of course this could be a huge problem if you were to turn it 180 degrees out and the scallops were facing the back. Now we're going to get our spring, we're going to put it over the end of the rod up to the clip, the guide rod that is. We're going to get our tip housing and oriented with the open part of the tip housing towards you, you will just slip the bottom portion of the tip housing over the end of the rod and compress the spring up on the guide rod. At this point you can remove the tape and then you rock it forward so that this pin that's in the guide rod is now in the groove in the back of the tip housing. Now you can move this up and down the tip housing in the guide rod assembly so that the hole at the bottom of the Z-Rack lines up over the recessed pin, the plastic pin if you will, that's inside the recess for the Z-Rack in the tip housing. Push that forward and it should fall right in. It may be a little stiff on a new one, but you push that forward. Now, if you needed to replace your tip housing, if it were warped, especially the cover, they can become warped or damaged over time, you could replace it at this point. But that is pretty straightforward. You just would remove all of the internal assemblies and the screw, put in the new piece, and put them back with the circuit board going in first, with the spring-loaded pin for the tip stripper going in next, then the Versa tip. Make sure the collar stays seated down and then fit the cover back over the tip housing. So you're going to hold it with one hand while you get one of the screws started. I always like to start near the top. Get my small Phillips screwdriver to get that started. We're going to make sure that the lines are still intact and in the, in the groove that they belong in. We never want to pinch either one of those lines, especially the tip stripper switch wires that come up beside the line. Now, there's a tendency for our line to, to pull it backwards. So just kind of help it move around to the front while we tighten this up. And later, we may have to adjust this a little bit to make sure that it's lined up properly with the other tip housing. If it's, if it's to the back or to the front too far, it could interfere and click and cause the errors as it contacts the other tip housings. So we put our screws in. We're not going to over tighten them. Over tightening, over tightening them can result in damage to the tip housing cover. We make sure that it was behind the small plate or clamp that holds the Versa tip in place. We snug that up, we snug them all up, and now we raise it up with the others. We pull our Versa, whoops, we still need to put the tip stripper back in. We just snug this cap screw here up with the, make sure that the tip stripper sleeve is, is in the full up position before you screw that in. Make sure that it moves freely and that it is settling down against the tip of the screw when you're finished. We're going to raise the tip housing to the top position. I'm going to lower the others. And we will replace our paper towel at the top of the assembly so that we can 
safely replace the plastic clip. and the screw that holds it in place. Then we're going to bring these together and see how it lines up. In order to do that, you want to face it from this direction. And if you need to, make adjustments by loosening the two screws here until you see that this is staying in the correct position. You restart your instrument and initialize and check it by running and looking at the engagement to your tip boxes. And you can also use a tip alignment tool that's in your special tools kit to give a basic idea of your alignment. That concludes replacing the Z-Rack.